It's the dictionary. Dictionary. It's the 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 dictionary. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. My name is Spencer. How's everybody doing today? I hope you're doing great. I'm doing fine. Uh, today is January 25th, 7.08 a.m. That's when I'm recording this. That's not when this episode is airing. I think this episode is airing on March 6th. March 6th. Just three days after my half birthday. Halfway to 44. No, halfway between 43 and 44. If I was halfway to 44, I'd be 22. Those days are long gone. Uh, okay, let's now talk about, no, before we talk about the words, I would like to say, please rate and review this show on whatever uh, platform thing that you're watching this on, listening to this on, Apple Podcasts, Spotify probably has some sort of rating thing now, uh, YouTube, you can like, you can share, you can subscribe, you can comment, you can do all those things, that'd be great, thank you very much. Uh, let's see, what else? If you want to buy merchandise, you can go to the T public link in the show notes, the description, click on that link, open up that link, buy all the stuff. Maybe you can even get it on sale. Uh, if you would like to contact me, you can email me dictionarypod at gmail.com and you can also email me your own theme song. If you would like to make a short Short, 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 very short uh, theme song for my show, not not your own theme song, my theme song, my own show, then you can email that to me. Uh, you can email me a joke. If you come up with a joke for any word through the end of the alphabet, email me the joke and I'll tell your joke on the show. Social media is at Dictionary Pod see some pictures that I post. Sometimes it's dogs, and sometimes it's snakes, and sometimes it's plants, and sometimes it's other things that you can see. Like old, uh, like, uh, not a stethoscope, but eventually we'll get to stethoscope. It was an endoscope. That's what it was I posted recently. Um, anything else? Join the Patreon for one dollar a month. That gets you very early episodes. Very early early episodes if you want to be way cooler than the rest of your friends or enemies um anything else hmm <laughs> i think that's probably fine oh google voice number call it you can text it 917-727-5757 if i don't use it i lose it so sometimes i just have to text myself back and forth if i'm gonna lose it uh because they'll say you're not using this you're gonna lose it and i'm like but I want people to contact me. Please contact me. Uh, if you leave a voicemail, I will put it in an episode unless you say no. If it just This is just for you, Spencer. Please say that. But otherwise, the people are going to hear it. All right, let's talk about these words today. We have the first word is erbium. E-R-B-I-U-M. Erbium. Noun from 1843, this is a metallic element of the rare earth group. Yes, the periodic table is divided into groups. That's how it's all organized. And one of those groups is the rare earth group. Is there a very rare earth group or a common earth group? I don't remember my periodic table. Yeah, it says see the element table. Uh, that was a very fun episode. Uh, where we just went through the, all of the elements and we didn't we didn't get to discuss them as much as we would have liked because it was we were going on for very long. But that's a fun episode. Uh, that was with Jax and Rob of the band Melter. So we definitely mentioned Erbium in there at some point. Lots of fun sound effects in that episode as well. Uh, this word is from Itterby. Itterby, Sweden. I guess that's a town or a city. Uh, it is spelled Y T T E R B Y. So um, maybe I don't I don't know if it was invented there or found there or just it just got to be named there. That's great. That's great for Itterby, Sweden. And I'm sure I'm pronouncing that town name wrong. Uh, okay, sound effect time. I'm just gonna go 
Boop. The next word is the beginning of the E-R-E -E section, which uh, that's probably going to go on for a little bit of time. Not that long, actually. Uh, just a little bit into tomorrow's episode, the next episode. Uh, the first one is E-R-E, -E, and you pronounce it air. E-R-E, -R -E, first form. This is a preposition from before the 12th century. And the synonym is the number two definition for the second form of the word before, before, as in air nightfall. This is very poetic, it feels like. Before nightfall, air nightfall. Why do we use this? Why does this mean before? Uh, this is from the Old English air, spelled A-E-R, which is that ash where the A and the E are squished together. That's uh, an adverb. It means early or soon. Uh, it is akin to the Old High German air, E-R, which means earlier. Also from the Greek, airy, E-R-I, which means early. So, yep, it's all about just before a thing, early, all that stuff. Anything else? Nope. But we do have the next form. Boop. The second form of air is a conjunction. Um, yeah, I guess guess it's it's, it's been shortened. Uh, you're not combining things together. Uh, it's a conjunction also from before the 12th century, and the synonym is the third form of the word before. And I'm, I'm kind of tempted to look. Ooh. I did skip straight to uh, almost the exact right page. Uh, here we go. Third form of before. Oh, there's a bunch of them. Did not expect that. Yeah, there's like like 100 definitions. Um, okay. So, yeah, just means before. Air is before. And you can use it in poetry. That's where I think you should use it. Boop. Next word is e-reader. The letter E hyphen and then reader. Reader. Noun from 1999. A handheld electronic device designed to be used for reading ebooks and similar material. Just material that's similar to ebooks. Uh, yeah, you could probably like throw on PDFs or something. Anything in a digital format, you could probably put on an ebook, an e reader. It's the thing that allows you to read the e-things, the electronic things. No etymology, because we know e means electronic, and it's a way that you can read things, so it's a reader. You're a reader reading the e-reader. Yeah. I, I've never used one of these. Uh, there was some book app or something. I uh, was able to read some books on my phone, um, but I didn't really do a whole lot of that. It's very small. Um, E-readers tend to be a bit bigger or a lot bigger than a phone. Um, but yeah, I'm just not a, as big of a reader as I probably should be. So I never uh, got into the E-readers. But I know people, they love their E-readers. If you go on vacation and you used to bring a 10 books that were this big, where's the? this is my other finger pointing to that. This is a whole stack of books. But your e-reader, you got all those books in this tiny little thing, and you save so much space. Boop. Erebus is next. Capital E-R-E-B-U-S. Erebus. Noun from 1578. Number one. A personification of darkness in Greek mythology. The personification of darkness... I actually just saw a trailer for an animated movie. I wonder if I could find it. Hmm. Can't think of what it's called at the moment. Is it, it's not just called Darkness. I can't remember. But uh, one of the the characters looks like the personification of darkness. They have just they're just dark. They're just and they have a couple of eyes, and that's pretty much it. Um. Oh, so the, yeah, it's just the personification of darkness. What what does that look like? Maybe we need to post a picture on the social media for Erebus. What does Erebus look like? According to the old Greeks. Number two, a place of darkness in the underworld on the way to Hades. Hades 
is I think that's where the river Styx is, and it's like it's like hell. It's kind of like hell. Um, but this is Erebus. It's on the way to Hades, so you have to go through this place of darkness on your way to Hades. I don't know why you're going there. You're gonna go visit your family. Yeah, that's Erebus. Um, yeah, this is just from the Greek Erebos. Erebos. I don't know what... Should we see? What does the Greek word Erebos mean? Greek word... I mean, we could probably just go to translate. Let's try that one. And we're going to put in the Greek language as the start. Um, I mean, I could put the Greek to English. And we are going to type in E-R-E-B-O-S. It just means Erebos. Hmm. That's odd. I was hoping it would be like darkness. Anyway, let's move on. Boop. The next word is the word erect. And, you know, all of us mental 12-year-olds are going to have some giggles for these next few words. Aren't we? Yes, we are. The first form of the word erect is an adjective. You're des describing something as erect. Uh, this is from the 14th century, number 1A, vertical in position. Also, not spread out or decumbent. I don't remember what decumbent means, but I'm guessing, I'm guessing that it's uh, spread out. Something spread, maybe you put your butter on your toast, you spread it out all over the toast, and it's decumbent. Uh, your butter is not vertical on the toast. That would be a very odd way to butter your toast. But hey, you know, you do you. You do you. As, the, as people like to say, I'm not going to yuck your yum. Uh, we have a couple examples. An erect plant stem. The plant stem is pointing up from the ground. Another example, columns still erect in the ruins. So, you know, back in the ancient Greek times, they got all these old ruins, but some of the things are still standing. So the columns, some of the columns are still vertical. They're still erect straight up into the air. Uh, okay, what's next? 1B for erect, standing up or out from the body. So it doesn't literally have to be vertical up from the ground. Horizontal would be across, parallel to the ground. Vertical is up towards the sky. Uh, but this one is standing up or out from the body. This is a body. Everybody's got a body. Something sticking out of the body would be erect. Do you see where this is going? Uh, this Our example is not what you think it might be. We have erect hairs. That's the example. So when you get the goose bumps or the goose pimples and your arm hairs start sticking up, or the hairs on the back of your neck when a ghost breathes on your neck, then you got erect hairs because they're sticking straight out of the body. 1C, characterized by firm or rigid straightness in bodily posture. In bodily posture, okay, as, as in an erect bearing, B-E-A-R-I-N-G, an erect bearing. Not entirely sure what that's talking about, but... What I do think of is uh, people in the military, or maybe those uh, security guards, I don't think that's the right term, the people with the big old furry black hats uh, in England, in front of the, pa the palace, the Buckingham Palace, uh, they are erect, uh, because they are characterized by firm or rigid straightness in bodily posture. They're just standing there, perfectly straight, and they don't do anything. You can't, you can't make them laugh. You can't, can't do any of that. Um, number two is archaic, and it means directed upward. So maybe uh, if you're shooting a rocket into the sky, uh, it would be directed upward. So the rocket would be erect because you're directing it to the sky. But while technically, yes, the rocket would be erect because it's vertical, uh, it's this, this way, this definition is not really how we use, we use that word these days. Another way that we don't use this word these days is number three, it's obsolete. The synonyms are alert and watchful. So if you're watching things closely, uh, maybe a cat sees an insect 
or a mouse, they're going to be very alert and watchful. And then back in the day, people would say, oh, that cat is erect. But it's not. It does. It sounds weird to our 21st century brains. Number four. This is being in a state of physiological erection. And we're going to talk about erection in a couple of words. If you're in a state of physiological erection, you would be erect. Erectly is an adverb and erectness is a noun. How much erectness does that cat have when it is watching the bugs? Uh, this is from the Latin erectus, which is from the verb eregere, which means to erect. Uh, that is from the E prefix plus regere, which means to lead straight or guide. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, and there's more at the word right, R-I-G-H-T, like let's go right instead of left. I'm guiding you to the right. I am erecting you that way. I don't know. Beep. The second form of erect is the verb form from the 15th century, and it looks like it's just transitive. So this is the action of erecting something, like a building. I'm sure we'll see that example here. So 1A1 is to put up by the lifting together of materials or parts, and the synonym is build. We're going to go build a house. we got to get all the parts together and put them up together at the same time. Just, just throw them up into the air, and then they will create a house. Magically, that would be great if that worked. Number 1A2, to fix in an upright position. And I don't know what we're talking about there. To fix in an upright position. Okay, so are you? is this when you are fixing a thing while you're standing upright? Or... Are you fixing a thing when it is in an upright position? Hmm. I don't know about that one. Number one, A3. To cause, to stand up or stand out. So the ghost whispering in your ear would be erecting your hairs because it would make your hairs stand on end. Yeah. 1B is archaic. And it is to direct upward, just like in the adjective we saw, uh, to direct upward, directing upward, all that, that's archaic. 1C, to change from an inverted to a normal position, and the image, the, blah, I, I, I said it, I said the word, uh, the example of what you are changing is an image. To change an image from an inverted to to a normal position. What's an inverted position? Is this when you see in movies when somebody has a picture of a framed picture of somebody that they don't like anymore on their table and then they put it down. They're like, I don't want to see your face anymore or I'm embarrassed by what I'm doing so I don't want you to see me. So I'm going to put your face down. You, you look down. But then when you lift it up, you're erecting it. Is that what we're talking about? What other, what other example could there be of, of putting, uh, inverting an image and then you put it up into a normal position? That's the only thing I could think of. Number two, to elevate in status. Elevate in status. So if you're in the army and you're going from, uh, what, I don't know, the ensign to the captain to the general to the sergeant, maybe that's a back step. I don't know. You'd be erecting, erecting your status. Uh, for me in the movie industry, I, cause I like to think about things in terms of movies. Uh, maybe you start off as a PA and then you move on to a grip and then, uh, maybe an actor and then a director and then a producer. I don't know. That's, that's sort of a, of erecting your status. Erect your status. Number three, the synonyms are set up and establish. So you're just, you're creating a thing. Maybe you're setting up a nonprofit, an organization, a charity. You're establishing it. You have erected your nonprofit. Other than physical things like buildings, I don't think that we really use this word in those other ways. Um, yeah. Number four. This is obsolete. The synonyms are encourage and embolden. 
you're running a race. I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to erect you. Nope, doesn't sound right. Number five, to draw or construct upon a given base. So you've got a base, you've got a place that something could be built on, um, and you are drawing or constructing. You are constructing something up on that base. The examples would be uh, as a perpendicular or figure. What? To draw or construct as a perpendicular or figure upon a given base. Well, I understand a figure. I mean, you could, any sort of thing, a sculpture maybe, but what's a perpendicular? Is a perpendicular a noun? Hmm. Erectable is an adjective. It can be erected. It is erectable. Okay, next word. Boop. Erectile or just erectile. E-R-E-C-T-I-L-E. -E -E. Adjective from 1830. One, of, relating to, or capable of undergoing physiological erection. You know where we're going here. There's a lot of different things, it sounds like, that there could be, uh, could be erected. Of, relating to, or capable of undergoing physiological erection. As in the examples, erectile tissue, so that is tissue that can be erected physiologically, and then also erectile dysfunction. So that's relating to something that can't be erected anymore. That tissue is not erectable anymore, or at least at the moment. Uh, number two, I mean, you know what? Let's just talk about that there. We're talking about dicks. That's what we're talking about. Erectile dysfunction. The penis is the better way, the better word, but we like to use other words to talk about those some parts of the body. Uh, in fact, Monty Python has a fantastic song. It's called The Penis Song, and it's just all different ways that you can describe the penis. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about erectile dysfunction, ED. Um, and, you know, I'll put a link in the show notes if, if this is something that you are uh, dealing with. If you're dealing with this erectile dysfunction, maybe go get some help. It could be physiological help, maybe with a doctor. It could be maybe mental help with a therapist. The brain, the mind, the mental stuff can have a huge effect on the body. You fix some things in your brain, you might fix some things in your body. So that's a good place to start. Um, and I think this is this ED is way more common in people with those parts, people with a penis, than, uh, than they even realize. A lot of people deal with this at some point in their life, and so it's nothing to be ashamed about, and, you know, just, just deal with it, go get some help, figure it out. It's not the end of the world. Okay, and depending on the situation, you know, it could be a pill, it could be, a th who knows, lots of, lots of possibilities. I'm not a doctor, I don't know. You know, you gotta you gotta figure out what your own situation is like. When you read the dictionary, sometimes you talk about these sensitive subjects. Okay, number two for erectile is capable of being raised to an upright position, as in the erectile quills of a porcupine. You do not want to be in the way when the porcupine erects their quills. You, that's not, that's, that's a scary, scary times. Uh, capable of being raised. So yes, the quills are erectile or erectile. There's no etymology because we already learned about that before. So we're going to move on to uh, another one. Boop. That's the sound of a something being erected. Erection. Yep. Noun from the 15th century. 1A is the state of marked by firm, turgid form and erect position of a previously flaccid bodily part containing cavernous tissue when the tissue becomes dilated with blood. Wow, that was not at all what I was expecting. There was, there was a bit more than I thought there would be. Um, okay, break that down a little bit. The state marked by firm, turgid form that's that's the main part, you know, when something is 
in a firm, turgid form. It, it's an erection. It's erect. Uh, erect position of a previously flaccid bodily part. Okay, that's the other important part. There, you can't have one without the other. If something is constantly erect, it's. I mean, yes, I guess it's erect, but you don't have anything to compare it to. You have to compare it to, it was flaccid before. And again, we're talking about a penis. Um, it contains cavernous tissue when the tissue becomes dilated with blood. So that's why the penis becomes erect is because the blood, the brain is like, I'm going to send blood to that part of the body. And as the blood goes there, that's what the, the tissue has, I guess, enough caverns in it. Never heard it described that way. I guess there's enough caverns in it that the blood fills those caverns and makes it, uh, what was the phrase? Firm and turgid. A firm, turgid form. Hmm. Okay. Uh, yep. Now we have one B. An occurrence of such a state in the penis or clitoris. And yes, we have to say this is a very, very important part. The, the penis and the clitoris are are formed from the exact same part of the body. When you are growing in the womb, or wherever you're growing, it's probably in the womb, the same part, once your body, once your genes decide whether you're going to go one way or the other or right down the middle, because there's lots of different forms bodies can take, it's the same part of the body that is becomes a clitoris or a penis, or a combination of both. I'm going to suggest that you watch the movie, the documentary, Everybody, because they go into more, This it's about intersex people. It's like, oh, well, physiologically, what are they? It's a, it's a fascinating conversation, and you got to educate yourself. So, yes, this is not something that we typically think of or talk about, but, yes, the clitoris can be enlarged, uh, engorged with blood in some way, and uh, gets gets erect. We have to say that. We have to say that. Um, and I I forgot about it myself. Even though it's all it's all part of the body, that's what we're talking about. Uh, so I'm glad the first time they actually said the word penis in here, they also mentioned clitoris, which I'm very happy about. Number two, the act or process of erecting something, and the synonym is construction. We're doing. I mean, how often do you hear, you know, contractors or builders say, we're, we're making an erection. We're, we got to go to the erection site. Maybe, maybe sometimes, but often they're going to say construction. Erection has so much connotation, so much meaning behind it that we automatically go to the body parts. Don't we? Of course we do. Number three is something erected. A building is an erection because it has been erected. Okay, that's good for erection. We got one more related word. Yep. Erector. E-R-E-C-T-O-R. -E Again, it would be a funny superhero or villain name to be called the Erector. Maybe it already exists. I don't know. They just build stuff. They just make things vertical, filled with blood. Okay, erector is a noun from 1538. One that erects, especially a muscle that raises or keeps a part erect. Hmm. What? Let's let's look up. Is this what I want to put in my Google search history? Okay, why not? Erector muscle? No. Oh, okay. Oh, yes, we got it's yes, we're looking at the spine. Uh, let's look at, look at, let's look at some better images. Um, this is a complicated image. Where's the erector muscle? Where's the erector? Oh, here, erector spini muscle. It's, um, just right in the middle. It's a vertical muscle just right down the middle of the spine. It lets you, I don't know, erect your spine maybe? Not erect, erect. Are there any more in here? Not that, not that I'm seeing. Not that I'm seeing. Okay, well, you got it. You got erector muscles. Uh, oh, we have another one. Uh, th yeah, this is this is taking it into a different uh, different world a little bit. Boop, erector again. Uh, this has a capital E, and this is a trademark, and it is used 
for a metal toy constructing set. And yes, you, uh, Lincoln Logs is not technically an erector set, but that's, you know, you're building something, but tech, but there was an actual brand toy called erector set. I don't think I ever had one of those. Uh, let's, let's look up pictures of this erector set. Um, I mean, yeah, 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 it looks like they're still being made, maybe. Um, ooh, this is the super construction set. You can build this, like, crane kind of thing, and, uh, they're, like, fancy, I don't even want to say Legos. They're, like, way more intense than Legos, but it looks like maybe each one is its own set that you put them together in a certain way. I don't know. I never had it, but they're pretty cool. I'll put in this link for, uh, a Rector set. Uh, let's see, they were in 1911 is when they were started over 100 years ago um what else are they still going i assume they must be anyway that's pretty cool a rector set okay moving on um e region capital e next word region noun from 1930 the part of the ionosphere occurring between about 55 and 80 miles, which is about 90 and 130 kilometers, above the surface of the Earth and containing the daytime E layer and the sporadic E layer. What? <laughs> I'll put a link in the show notes for ionosphere, I guess, and the E layer so you can go learn more about that because, you know, maybe a visual would be nice, maybe an explanation of what what is the sporadic E layer and the daytime E layer? I don't know. But yes, the the sky, the, all that stuff up above you, there's it's filled with layers and different densities of air and and temperatures. And so yeah, there's all these different layers. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. Okay. Boop. Next is air long. You have to emphasize the long. E R E L-O-N-G, adverb from 1553. This is archaic, and the synonym, it's related to our first words. The synonyms are before long and soon. We saw at the beginning the word air means before, and so you put it with long, you got before long, you got air long. But it's just one word, air long. And then soon, ah, uh, soon, an another word for that is anon. Anon? We will be ending this episode. Air long, this episode will end air long. We need to bring this one back. We need to say this more often. Before long and soon. Boop. Next is Eremite. E-R-E-M-I-T-E. -E. This is a noun from the 13th century. The synonym is hermit, uh, but especially a religious recluse, somebody who is very religious and they have decided to just stay all alone and be by their self, uh, maybe probably for religious reasons. Maybe they feel like um, to be the most spiritual and religious they can, they need to be alone. An Aramite. Uh, Aramitic or Aramitical is an adjective and Aramitism is a noun. Um, it doesn't really give much in the etymology. It just says it's a Middle English word, and there's more at the word hermit. But if we dig in to the spelling, we can see that, uh, well, it's not great, but Eremite and hermit, they have, well, the ER got switched, and then we have the MIT. So it looks like we'll get etymology in hermit that will help us describe Eremite. Eremite, I guess, just became hermit. Maybe they were like, I can't say, I don't know. Maybe maybe it was a pronunciation thing. It just changed Eremite to hermit. Hmm. Okay. The last word is Eremurus. Eremurus. E-R-E-M-U-R-U-S. Noun from 1829. The plural is Eremuri. This is any of a genus, which is also Aramurus, of perennial Asian herbs of the lily family that produce tall racemes of showy blooms. It is called also 
foxtail lily. Tall racemes of showy blooms. That's great. Uh, let's see. The etymology says this is from the Greek eremos. Where did we... No, we saw erebos before. Eremos, uh, which means solitary. Ah, see, this. so this is a little bit of information about where eremite probably came from. Eremos is solitary. And then ura means tail. Uh, so, and there's more at the word ass. Hmm, ass. Okay. Uh, solitary tail. So maybe it looks like a tail and it's all alone. Maybe we should put a pink. We should put a picture on the social media for Eremurus. E R E M U R U S. So you can see what it looks like. This, uh, what is it? An, a, a perennial Asian herb of the lily family, also called foxtail lily. Okay. I'm going to pick up word of the episode. We had today erbium, air, air, e-reader, erebus, erect, erect, erectile, erection, erector, erector, e-region, airlong, eremite, and eremuris. I'm not entirely sure what to pick. I mean, you know, talking about, um, you know, erectile dysfunction, erection, those, it's good to know about your body, learn about your body, learn about other bodies. I don't know. Um, is that what we want to pick? Do we want to pick Erebus is kind of cool. The personification of darkness. That was pretty cool. Um, I think maybe I should, I'm going to be an Eremite. I'm going to go be a religious recluse. I don't know what the religion is, but I'm just going to go be by myself. Um, I did have hermit crabs when I was a kid, but I don't know. I don't know what to pick, what to pick. Um, I mean, I don't know, just to be silly, let's pick erection as the word of the episode. What song am I going to sing about erection? Everybody's got erections, yeah. Fine. I just wanted to do something funny. Okay, let's talk about a movie. I'm uh, getting close to uh, finishing up this list here. I'm almost caught up. I got to watch some more mo movies. We, we were watching the show Beef. Uh, and so that took a, a, this week or so, the last week or so, we watched Beef, which is that show gets real intense. And that last episode just makes it all worthwhile. I, I really liked it. Um, so the next movie I watched is Nimona. Nimona. You can watch this on Netflix. Uh, I will recommend, and I, I would like to re-listen to this actually, uh, my friends... I uh, have a podcast called How Did This Not Get Made? And they talk about movies and projects that did not get made. And so uh, a while ago, they had a project, they had an episode about Nimona, but then it got made, it got finished. So I'm actually really fascinated to go back and listen to that. Uh, it is a super fun movie. Um, I, what do I want to say about it? I don't know. Watch a trailer, I guess. Um, just visually, it's super fun. There's tons and tons of energy, and I love the character, the main character, Nimona, especially. Um, she's just super fun, and it's just like a really interesting, different sort of heartwarming story. I think it might be based on a graphic novel or something like that. I don't know, but that's what it sort of feels like. So I recommend Nimona. Super fun and heartwarming and great. And I believe it is Chloe Grace Moretz who does the lead character. And she must have had so much fun doing this character. Not that she had to physically do anything, but I couldn't imagine that she didn't because this is such a physical character. Anyway, super fun. Go watch Nimona. Uh, and I believe it is nominated for um, a number of awards. Um, I should probably confirm this. Let's go look up on the good old IMDb. Um, I believe it is nominated for Oscar and um, Annie Awards. Those are the animation awards. Um, let's just make this a little bit faster and search for awards. Uh, where are you, awards? And, okay, here is the award section. They didn't put it where I wanted them to put it. Um, yes, it is nominated for Best Animated Film for the uh, 2024 Academy Awards Oscars. Um, it's also got, oi, Annie Awards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine Annie Award nominations. 
amazing uh, Critics' Choice. Yeah, it's got a bunch of awards, not award nominees, and I think there's at least one win. Go watch Nimona. That's it. That's the end of this episode. Thank you very much for watching and listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye.